Welcome back to Open Line, everyone, on this day after the presidential election. As the votes are still being counted, we are talking about mail-in ballots. How are they counted? Um, this is the whole process surrounding mail-in ballots. I have two guests via Zoom, as all of our guests are now. Marion Ott with the Tennessee League of Women Voters and Albert Tisch. She's a former administrator of elections in Davidson County. And we are going to go to the phones. Let's go to James. Hello, James. Uh, yes. Uh, hold on one second. Hold on one yes, second. Yes, I'm, I'm here. Go right ahead. What's on your mind? Yes, what's on my mind is um, I read in the paper that um, the other day that the Democrats, somebody that works for Democrats in Tennessee where I live, uh, trying to um, get the ballots and the judge in Tennessee would not let them, which I think is a good thing that the judge did. But um, anyway, I believe that the Dem some people that works for a Democrat have been going to other states or other cities taking ballots and doing cheating for Biden. And, and you see on videos how many people are for Trump when Trump does them campaigns that he does. And with, them, with there being that many people in each state that he goes to, and it looks like that more people is for Trump than there is for Biden. And I don't think that it's fair. I don't think the numbers are right. There's some kind of cheating going uh, along somewhere. And it, I even saw videos of people throwing a uh, million ballots in trash cans and people um, stealing the boxes that the ballots go into at places. And where I think where are you seeing that video? Where are you seeing that? I'm, I'm seeing it on, um, I ain't on the internet, on Facebook. And I see all kinds of videos of, and pictures of them talking about it and showing people doing all that and everything. So you don't have... And even at a police, even at a police department, I forgot what city or state it was in, but at a police department, there is a ballot box where people threw ballots in and somebody tore that ballot box out of the wall and took it out of the station. Okay. All right. Well, James, I appreciate your call. I know you are not alone in some of the things you're hearing. I, um, I don't want to ask each of you to respond to James there. And Albert, I'll start, I'll start with, with you. And, and it concerns me that there could be massive, widespread, um, I guess, loss of, of confidence in, in our voting system. Do you have that concern? What do you think when you hear James say that he saw that stuff on the internet? I've, I've seen that stuff as well, and I don't know, you know, how much of it's true and how much of it is not true. I tend to want to look at the systems in place. And when you ask me, have I lost confidence? Not in Tennessee, because I know that system and I know it's a good system. Um, but I look at those states, Oregon, California, and I have to go back through them, Hawaii, but as you mentioned, none of them seem to be battleground states. If you ask me, did I, did I have confidence in those states where you simply mail an, an unrequested ballot to everybody on the Okay, yeah, you've, you've made that point. So you don't have confidence in that. That's, I guess, is what you're saying. But what about, I mean, there's so much at stake here. So this is a presidential election. We have a guy on the phone saying that there are more people at Trump's rallies than at Biden's, and, and so he doesn't trust the system. When you hear that, and, and, and there are videos on the internet where people are throwing ballots in the trash, this is what's out there. So you're a former Davidson County Administrator of Elections. What do you say? I, I'm sort of, I, I've got the Joe Friday approach. Just the facts, ma'am. So, and I hate to sound like a broken record, but I look at the system, if the system's working good, I have confidence in that one. I don't have confidence in the systems. Like I said, I, I know I'm not, I don't seem to be giving you the answer that you want. I just want the answer, what, I just want you to say what, what you feel. You have no conf, you, you, do you agree with that caller? Do you agree with that caller? To not have confidence in these battleground states? When I look at the individual battleground states, as you and I mentioned, I don't see systemic problems in the battleground states with their systems i, I don't see i don't see ma uh, you know complete mail outs in the battleground states i have not seen that so i tend to uh, maybe I've, i'm too familiar with the systems i tend to look at it state by state what's your system what are your safeguards where are your weaknesses um 
So I, I'm concerned. Well, it's kind of an important time right now. And so when you hear someone say there are more people at Trump's rallies than at Biden's rallies, therefore I don't trust the system, you say maybe he's right, or you say that may not be the kind of evidence that, that would... That's anecdotal. I, I, it doesn't tell me anything about the system, who attends rallies and who doesn't attend rallies. I see that. I saw the numbers. It's, 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 uh, it certainly makes an impression on you. The enthusiasm gap was something that was significant and easy to detect. But the numbers are what we look at uh, in the election. We, you can't measure the enthusiasm gap. It doesn't get you anywhere. All right, and I want to ask you, Marion, you just heard what James said, and, and I think you know, I listened again to, to call, call in radio, talk, talk radio, and, and James is not alone in what he's saying. So what do you say to what you heard from James? What I say it first is that there's no reason not to have faith in our election system. Albert and I both share um, admiration of the Tennessee election officials and the way they count ballots. I think we should have the same uh, in, in the other states. But when we talk about confidence in our election system, it was, it was well documented and said before this election, I've been to FBI briefing about it, it is this disinformation and misinformation that is really the bigger threat to our election system. So as Albert says, let's have the facts. And my own personal thing is if I hear one kind of bizarre story, I, I'm gonna, my antenna is gonna be up, but I'm, I'm going to wanna see that in one or two or more mainstream media um, so it can be confirmed. Because seriously, if things like that were going on, I am sure that Fox and CBS and CNN, I mean, all the mainstream media would be definitely wanting to report that because it would be significant news. And, and it's well known that it's not that hard to um, uh, edit videos. Uh, I had somebody say to me, oh, you know, did you hear that? that uh, a mail truck in somewhere threw away a couple, you know, tens of thousands of ballots. I'm like, what are you talking about? And I went to see the story. No, a mail truck rolled over into a ditch or something and there were ballots and they got put up and put in the other truck. So we, we have to be really, really careful that we find the facts and not believe any kind of um, tidbit that we hear once. And James um, and mentioned I, that. I feel like James mentioned the ballots being thrown away, thousands of ballots being thrown away in a video he saw on the internet. I've heard that story. I've heard it repeated by um, some people. What What do you think when you hear that, that story? I say let's go back and find and get some verification of it. Um, our election system has a lot of people looking at it from both parties. I mean, we have we have bipartisan people working in the elections, and then we have um, observers from both parties, and by the way, from other entities too. In fact, the League of Women Voters was at several of the polling places in this state um, on Tuesday watching what was going on. So I, I, I think people should have confidence. Uh, will there be an episode here or an episode there? Absolutely. Think about how many thousands of people it takes to run an election. Will, will a few of them not remember their training and do something that, that's out, you know, out of the scope of what they're supposed to? Yeah, probably. But I think we have a good system, and Albert and I agree on that, that we need a system. And, and generally, there's checks and balances, and, and things, get, things are happening correctly. And we, we're, right. we're going to get to the right number. All right, let's take another quick call here. Taylor. Hello, Taylor. Hey, Ben. Good evening to you and to your guest. Good evening. Uh, I'm, I'm a little surprised, Ben, you were so uh, taken with James's uh, story there. It seemed like a lot of rambling to me. Who's, uh, well, I hear, I hear uh, different iterations of that. I hear it. Basically, well, James well, doesn't trust do. the system, you know, and he's saying there were more people at at the rallies for Trump, and therefore these all the numbers are wrong. And, well, and then he, I'm here to testify that there were more at Trump's rally, but well, that has nothing to do with postage. Uh, 
So, uh, my question is this. The counting in Philadelphia started the morning of the election. In Florida, it started the day before the election, counting these absentee ballots. I, I can't understand why. I know it's state laws that do this, but it's about time the federal government came down with, at least on federal election, that your mail-in ballot, no matter how you got it, whether it's uh, uh, any of these systems, has got to be in the hands of that clerk at some date. There, most of these states that do mail out ballots <clears throat> mail them out in plenty of time. So why, why would someone wait till the day before the election and throw those in the mail and expect it to be sitting there the next morning. Uh, it's crazy stuff like that that I, I just don't understand. Right. But I agree, the Tennessee system is absolutely great. I've done absentee ballots only twice in my life, once when I was in the Army, and uh, I, I mailed it and thought I'd done this great service, and about a month after the election, my ballot came back to me, because I hadn't registered. Well, I didn't know anything about registering, and I'm sitting on the island of Guam, and I thought, well, the military is really concerned about <laughs> these GI votes. But anyway, all right, and, we'll tell you what. Good. Well, that's all right. I appreciate your call. All right, all right. We have to go to break. Then I'll let you all comment on what what Taylor said. So we'll we'll take a quick break. Come back. Take more calls. Be take back right after break, this. Come back.